Good morning my lovelies. Today we are going to look at a poem called Out Out by Robert Frost and we're looking at it really in terms of what, how we might look at an unseen poem in the exam in terms of form. Um, but those of you who do know CR you may notice this from your anthology. Why I didn't pick an anthology poem is I'm going to do that later um, and so you'll find that in another video series but of course everyone's studying different sections of the anthology anyway. So today we're looking at um, aspects of form <clears throat> and if you remember from the first video, uh, four videos ago now, uh, the things that I'll be looking at will be stanzas, whether it's got verses, rhyme scheme, rhythm. Um, I'm not particularly interested about capitals in this poem, monosyllabic bits, and whether it's got a particular form that will be significant or not. And so when we come to our time, I'm just going to read it through. It's uh, I've sp split it over four um, frames for slides um, so that you can see it more clearly because it's interesting for you to start thinking about the language now because we've been looking at form very much without looking at the words and the meaning and now we're going to start putting those two things together but I wanted to read it through not that I like the sound of my own voice but so that you can actually hear it you can you can think about it as well uh, but then I'll show it you because it was actually one long stanza and that's important so I don't want you to think of it as four sections even though I split it over four slides so out out by Robert Frost the buzzsaw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and dropped stove length sticks of wood sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it and from there those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges one behind the other under that sunset far into Vermont and the saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled, as it ran light or had to bear a load. And nothing happened. Day was all but done. Call it a day, I wish they might have said, to please the boy by giving him the half hour that a boy counts so much when safe from work. His sister stood beside him in her apron to tell him supper. At the word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leaped out of the boy's hand, or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However it was, neither, ref however it was neither refused the meeting. But the hand, the boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh, as he swung towards them holding up the hand, half in appeal but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all. Since he was old enough to know, big boy doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let him cut up my hand off, the doctor, when he comes. Don't let him, sister. So. But the hand was gone already. The doctor put him into the dark of ether. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath. And then the watcher at his pul pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart. Little. Less. Nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on there. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. So, kind of serious poem there. You'll see what I've done with it here uh, in terms of my annotation. So I started to think about the stanzas and you can see it's one big long stanza there. There's no breaking up. There's none of what I would call the kind of the tip top, the paragraph breaks, time, person, topic, paragraph, uh, place breaks. And that's something I think we need to consider and I'll be thinking about later. Um, you can see I started to pick out, but it's long, so I didn't do it all. The syllables in each line, and and I sampled, you know, quite a few from the beginning and then some towards the end. And mostly they were fitting in between nine and, and eleven syllables there. So we've got regular blank verse. There wasn't a rhyme scheme when I was looking at it. Yard, wood, it, count, other, Vermont. Um, but I did start to notice in the middle, we started to get much more... Uh, on Jambamont, you can see where I put the little arrows in the middle from one line to the next. And we also got quite a few sejuras where I put those breaks in. And I noticed that some bits, the bits that I've highlighted in pink, are particularly monosyllabic. And so that kind of draws attention to me to those parts of it. And I noticed as well at the bottom, we had lots of short sentences in Sejura. So I was noticing all of the things that we've been looking at over the last four videos um, and kind of thinking about, okay, well, what do, what is the writer doing here in terms of form? Uh, what choices have they made about how they've set the poem out and uh, what words go on each line and so on? So these were the nine things that I particularly noticed. I said that it was unrhymed. Um, there was 
it's been written in blank verse. The lines are between nine and 11 syllables. It's written in the third person narrative, apart from one bit, which I didn't notice until I just read it through, which was the uh, the bit that says, um, I wish they might have said, to call it a day, I wish they might have said. So there is a narrator there. Um, and whether that makes it somebody telling a story, I don't know. There's something interesting there, but they only crop up once. Um, and other than that, it's them recounting this story about this unnamed boy who loses his hand and then his life um, in, in in this accident. Um, there is use of cisure that seems to be particularly significant around the middle and the end of the poem. Um, that, by the way, gives me license to talk about structure, which I'll talk about in a few videos time. Um, so I could also make it into a structural point. You'll see now that you can't separate out form from language or structure. You know, they all kind of play together. But if I'm looking to write about form, that would be one of the things I might point out. I noticed as well, there was quite a lot of enjambrement in the middle where the lines were running into each other. Um, and significant use of monosyllables in parts of it. It was one single unbroken stanza and then we had those simple sentences at the end. So I could see those nine things about it, but in the exam I've only got 40 minutes to write and, and to think um, and to plan what I'm going to write and everything else. So I'm not going to have time and I wouldn't need to write about all of those things and some of those are not going to be very important. So what I have to do then to, in order to help me decide what is important, which of those nine things is the important thing, I have to then think about what's the big idea about uh, of the poem, what's the poem about? And this is where I'm going to start looking at language and start thinking about the quotations that are being used. I mean, I'm thinking about that last line there, and they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs, and the way that if the poem finishes with them just kind of going back to their own business. Um, and and I'm also thinking about the title because the title's obviously quite significant in poetry and it's taken from, um, well, at least I believe it to be taken from a line from Macbeth, at least it reminds me of that, where his soliloquy towards the end of the play where he says, out, out, brief candle, um, life's but a walking player. Um, and he's talking about his wife's death there. So it's Macbeth reflecting on life and death and, and how insignificant life is. So that's why when I started to think about the big ideas, these are just some things that I wrote down. These are my thoughts, really. I mean, other people might have other interpretations of it, but for me, this is what this poem is about. It's about life and death. It's about how life kind of carries on. Um, they just, you know, they don't stop to mourn. There's, there's no great uh, wailing and, and sobbing and, and so on. It makes me think how cheap life is, is particularly in rural areas, um, particularly maybe in the past. For me, it was about kind of continuing after, after such uh, tragic incidents. I mean, that tragic incident really is contained within the middle of the poem. Um, I think it's very much about rural life and, and that kind of, as I said before, a time when life is perhaps cheaper than it is now. So it got made me thinking about the value of life and the poets may be making a statement about how life meant less perhaps in those days or how people didn't mourn in the same ways. Um, about the fragility of life, you know, it's just in one... Um, in one stanza, and you can see where I'm starting to think about form now, we go from the boy working at the beginning of the poem and he's, uh, you know, chopping wood in the yard uh, to him dying by the end. Um, so it, I think it, for me very much that second word um, out, after out, out, brief is the brief candle about the brevity of life and the normality of death and, and, and how those things fit together. So those for me will be the big ideas. I'm sure you've got plenty more that would be better than the things that I've got. But I would say that, that if, if I had to think about it, what the big things are, though, those would be it. And then I have to think about what aspects of the form connect to that or help the poet communicate those ideas. And so I've got some kind of questions relating to the things that I picked out those nine things. So for instance, for me, I think it's important that it's written in a single stanza. And I think that helps in some ways convey the normality of death that you know it is not significant doesn't stand out there's, it's not separated there's no um it's just part and parcel of life um and the single stanza helps that the single stanza as well i would be thinking starts help helps me think this is one episode there's no beginning to it there's no end to it it's just something that happens and the, the death is not particularly significant doesn't stand out um 
I think as well the the drama of the middle section where the all of that enjambement and sejura was all of the green things I was marking before helps make that moment dramatic and helps fragment the the narrative in lots of ways um, and add to that unpredictable nature of the narrative contrasting with the the lack of enjambement um, and sejura at the beginning and I think the kind of the ending uh, where we've got the little less nothing and that ended it no more to build on there uh, it's just so matter of fact and I think that might be something I could pick up on but because it happens at the end I might save that to where I'm talking about structure and then I'm kind of going okay well I've got three things out of my list of nine but then some other things I can then discard and say well they're not very important I'm not going to say what they mean what they relate to for instance there's no rhyme I don't think that's significant I'm not ever going to say there's there's not this um in in most cases um I don't think it's important it's between nine to eleven syllables I don't think I can get any mileage of that I don't think it helps support the idea but in some ways I could I think and some of you are probably thinking yes actually just convey that normality um you know nothing there's no difference there's nothing that jumps off the page it's not um there's not those the use of space to allow us time to pause to think to reflect and that's the same almost like I was talking about Porphyria's lover and the the way Robert Browning uses rhyme and rhythm there um, to show how normal uh, the killing of his girlfriend is to this guy and um, the persona that he's he's talking about in in that poem and I think there's a similar thing there so I, whilst I'm kind of going okay I've discounted the ten syllables um, I might kind of revisit that and that might be something you may think is significant. Really, it's up to me to think, what's the major thing for me? And for me, I'm very much a kind of grade six, grade seven thinker. I can't prioritize. They're all important to me. I've just found you four things. Now, four things is fine. Four things about four, form is fine. Four things about language and structure will be fine. But I'm going to be able to write about 12 things in the exam, not in depth and not in detail. And that's going to cause me consequences in terms of my marks hence why I'll be kind of grade six grade seven thinking so really the grade nine I, I've got what my uncle calls a blunderbuss approach so if you're using a blunderbuss you just pepper things with uh, a number of bullets um, maybe a machine gun approach rather than anything just spraying it out fire hosing everything Whereas my uncle has what he calls the sniper approach, or he likes to think he does. And that's what grade nines think like. We need to think in terms of snipers, which is the one, which is the killer, which is the one thing, aspect of form that connects best with, um, between the, the use of form and the big idea. And so for me, in the next video, I'm going to be writing about how the use of the single stanza is the most important thing. I'm going to have to put all of my... Uh, you know my faith in that it's a, a leap of faith for a grade six or grade seven student to say okay it's this one thing and to take the sniper approach because that takes faith in your own skill and your own um your, your own understanding rather than just trying to pepper shot everything so that's a leap of faith you may think that the enjambement is sure is more important to write about you may think the the uh, the aspects about the short monosyllabic sentences is the most important thing about that's entirely up to you and actually that allows you more grade nine thinking as well because then you're going to have to be able to justify that to somebody who maybe doesn't agree or maybe who has got other priorities and see the significance of that and so it's up to you to argue your point in lots of ways which is another grade nine skill so in the next video we're going to be looking at how we write about form of course, we're going to be talking about language as well because we can't not. And we're going to be talking about the ideas in, in the poem. But I'm going to show you how I would write about the use of form in the exam, whether that's for an anthology poem, as Out Out would be if you're an OCR candidate, um, or whether it's an unseen uh, response, as it would be if you were everybody else. So we'll have a look at that next time.